great things in the Dunlop development series. Here is our track, 6,200 metres, 23 corners with a very high average speed. It is a great racetrack, Mark Scope. It certainly is, Neil. This is the number one racetrack in this part of the world. And as Neil said, 23 corners, 300 kilometres an hour down the main straight, the most famous straight in Australian motorsport, Conrad Straight, down to the chase for the fastest touring car corner in the world. And have a look at the layout. At the top of the hill, some of the most famous corners, McPhillamy Park, Reed Park, Skyline, the S's down the hill, the Dipper. We've seen drama there through the weekend. And down to Forest Elbow to lead onto that famous straight of over one kilometre long. And as they arrive down there at the chase, the cars are flat out, run out of breath, on the rev limiter, through the right-hander, and then they've got to slow them down to 110 kilometres an hour for the left-hander in the complex of the chase. Great overtaking position. We've got 12 in-car cameras. This is Nick Perkat in car triple two. We've got 12 in-car cameras covering all the action for you today. And what a great spread. This is Steve Richards on board. Craig Lowndes car. Massive damage to that car yesterday. Craig Lowndes and the team did a great job to get that car out and to qualify in the top 10 was a very good job. He was 16th with one minute to go before the top 10. And what about this young man? His first pole position at Bathurst. And what a red hot lap it was. Ultra committed, super accurate and very aggressive. Young Dean Canto teaming up with Dave Reynolds. He's been very good all week. His speed is very close to Dave, but he's down at the back of the grid. Remember, we've got Jamie Winkup at the back of the field. This is the, the champion, the man that's currently leading the series, and he's got a 300-point day with 273 points to his teammate. 273 points to Craig Lowndes, 279 to Winterbottom, and Winterbottom is at the front. So he's on the front of the grid, and Jamie Winkup is at the back. Stand by, this will be fantastic. Let's have a look at the Fuso starting grid for the Super Cheap Auto Mathis 1000, the 2014 edition, race 11 of 14 for our championship year. From the pole, it'll be Van Gisbergen and Webb for VIP Pet Foods. A Ford alongside Winterbottom and Steve Owen. That's row one. Oh, we've got a problem here with Todd Kelly, stationary car number seven. Out of row two, it'll be McLaughlin and Premer battling with Bright and Andrew Jones, position number four for Team BOC. And then another of the Brad Jones racing cars, Fabian Coulthard and Luke Gilden, they'll be strong today. Lowndes and Richards out of position number six. Looking further back, position number seven on the grid. His first top 10 shootout yesterday, James Moffat sharing with Taz Douglas. Dale Wood and a remarkable performance to get into the shootout. He's driving with Kiwi Chris Pither. There are eight Kiwis in the field. Jack Perkins and Cam Waters. I mentioned them a moment ago. James Courtney and Greg Murphy will partner. That will be a very strong combination. Greg's had four wins here. Nick Perkat and Oliver Gavin, who last weekend did the Petit Le Mans at Road America in the U at the Road Atlanta, I should say, in the USA. Michael Caruso and Dean Fiore. Nissan Altima. Alongside them will be Rick Kelly and David Russell, so they lock out positions 13 and 14. Scotty Pye, Ash Walsh, then the Davison brothers, 15 and 16 in the AMG Mercedes-Benz E63. Position number 17, Lee Holdsworth and Craig Baird. Seven is away again, thankfully. Remember, they had a little drama with Caruso's starter mode uh, earlier in the weekend. Russell Ingle, Tim Blanchard, then it's Tim Slade and Tony Delberto. It'll be car number 10, the car that we regularly see with 47, and then it's Dahlgren and Ritter in the second of the Volvos with retro livery, representing the 1994 win for Dick Johnson Racing, David Wall and Stephen Johnson. Ed Pedersen, Andre Heimgartner, and then look at this, Jamie Wincup, Paul Dumbrell, David Reynolds, Dean Canto out of 23 and 24. Wouldn't have written that one down earlier in the week. And then disqualified from 14th position in qualifying for passing under the red flag, Chaz Mostert, who we heard from before, together with one of the most experienced drivers in the race, Paul Morris. That's our field. 38 Australians, eight Kiwis, two from the UK, one from France, and another from Sweden. Five different nationalities. There'll be 25 cars on the grid, a total of 50 drivers. Sadly, we're missing Garth Tander and Warren Love, car number two. And as Mark pointed out before, we've got cameras from every conceivable angle around here. And 
Neil, of the 25 starters, this is on board now with Rick Kelly, there are five of the co-drivers, five of the B drivers starting. We saw Steve Richards, we saw Dean Canto, we also saw Paul Morris, but Greg Ritter and Tony Dalberto are also starting today. So five of the co-drivers on board now with Jason Bright. Been a very good job this weekend by Bright. He made a little mistake in qualifying when it could have been the case that he was the quickest man. There's Dalberto in the super cheap auto entry. He's sharing that with Tim Slade today. It's car number 10, slightly different livery. James Courtney's on board car number 22. He shares with Greg Murphy. He was fourth here a couple of years ago. It was a storming drive. He's been a runner-up before. He's had a third place as well. Runner-up in 2007. So coming through the final corner now to begin dropping into position after this formation lap. So remember, because Garth Tander isn't starting, James Courtney moves up into that position. So James Courtney up to 10. At a very fast race last year. Six hours and 11 minutes. We only had two safety car interventions for a total of five laps. The questions, who's got the pace? Who's got vehicle stability over the journey? What about driver compatibility and consistency? Pit stop performance, strategy, teams maintaining their discipline, fuel efficiency, reliability, and always the question mark for the weather. The cars are heavy with fuel. The first battle is 225 metres to turn one. They've warmed their brakes and their front tyres. Their rear tyres are cool. So shuffle okay, up mate. to the edge of your seat mate, because for the next six to seven hours, it's on again. Right. Flag, the 2014 Great Race Field is set. The Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1,161 laps, 1,000 kilometres of Mount Panorama. A problem at the start. Look at McLaughlin up the inside, the Volvo, a ripping start. was car triple two back in about 10. But it is a storming start here for McLaughlin, who's already got a car leak from them. Van Gisbergen trying to recover as they go up to turn two for the first time. Can Gizzy do this on cold tyres? He drops back in with Lowndes behind in fourth. Well done, Shane Van Gisbergen. That was quite a smart move, but what a start for McLaughlin. And a good move also from Steve Richards there, just to sneak in and lob that car of Craig Lowndes into a competitive spot early. Dale Wood in fifth. That's also a good start with Young Moffat right behind. Good job. James Courtney's made ground. That's a good start from James. There was a couple of guys that really balked at the start there. This is on board now with Wink Up. This great shot from the left-hand mudguard as he sneaks up the inside before you get to the top of the hill. wide over the jump there at McPhillamy. Wow. I, I said that was a conservative one for Steve at turn two, and I thought that was a very good placement of the car, but that's not good placement. That was a big moment. Caruso having a peek up the inside. Car number 18, Jack Perkins at the helm. Remember those cars that have got the green lights switched on in behind the windscreen have got the co-drivers on board. It is McLaughlin building towards 300 kilometres an hour that leads the field. Winterbottom and Van Gisbergen. Pressure between them. Then it's Richards. A big moment for him. Look at Winkup. He's not messing about. A bit of hip and shoulder with car number 34. Greg Ritter is in that car at the moment. Great job, mate. Bars. Richard Holway, engineer for the man that leads the race. At the end of the first of 161 laps, it is Scott McLaughlin with six tenths of a second over Mark Winterbottom, then Van Gisberg and the pole sitter, then Stephen Richards. Next in the queue, Dale Wood, then James Moffat, James Courtney, Fabian Coulthard, Nick Perkat, car triple two, who got a bit of a shot at turn one on lap one. Then Todd Kelly, car seven, in position 10, despite the scare pre-start. Great job, Jamie Winker, up five spots, and a very bold manoeuvre down the inside of Ritter at the chase. 
They're big risks, those ones, Neil. We said at the start of the race, this is a 300-point day, but it's Australia's biggest motor race, the race everyone wants to win. And you can see there the level of aggression from Wink Cup. Five positions on the opening lap. Also on that topic of opening lap, just looking at the computer timing here at the moment, Jason Bright got swallowed. He went all the way down to position number 12. Remember, he started off the second row of the grid. He lost eight spots in the process, so didn't get to focus on his start. But that's going to be a big job now to climb out. That's at least one, maybe two loads of fuel before you recover from giving your opponents that kind of a margin. That's right, he had a real bubble on the line. He, he, went, he dropped the clutch and didn't walk away for him. And then he was poorly positioned. He was wide at turn one, and they all uh, arrowed around the inside, which pushed him wide again. Jack Perkins was another that lost. He lost four positions uh, in that first lap exchange to Neil. So young Jack, who was so good in qualifying, little mistake right at the end of his lap would have put him four or five spots further up. We're on board now with Wink Up. And he's down the inside of Pi. This is just over the last rise. And that moves him to 17. <laughs> Back to the leaders. McLaughlin. We'll get another reading on that gap for you. Over Winterbottom. It's pretty much static. 0.66 of a second. Car number four, which suffered that terrible incident at Sandown. Been rebuilt. Lee Holdsworth at the wheel at the moment. There he is. New livery on the car this weekend. 19G impact with the wall at the end of the back straight. Car number 55. Dean Cando making progress in that car. Replay of the start. Gonna try keep an eye on what happens to Jason Bright here. He's in the team BOC red, white and blue car. It was a shocking start for him. He's had a couple of those this year. So most of the damage done by the time he got to turn one and they're still swapping him. And Percat actually just was out there on his own on cold tyres. How's this? <laughs> on board with McLaughlin, straight down the inside, straight to the lead of the race, rounding up the pole sitter. It was a beautiful start. It was a great reaction time, but it just walked really nicely. Look at Winker. What a great start from the back. He gained three or four spots immediately. Oh, that might actually looks a little bit weird. May have been a jump from down there. We'll have to have a really good look at that. Hard to tell with the timing of it. Each of the lines of the grid normally have a judge of fact, which are the people that have essentially put the yellow flag out for them to form up on. But that was a strange one because he looked like he was going before the others. He normally you don't miss the kick that badly, Neil. He rounded up David Wall, car 17, the Dick Johnson Racing Wilson security entry off the line. But you're right, it, it did look out of kilter with the other cars around him. Might have been a great reaction time. Give him the benefit of the doubt. 210.2, Scott McLaughlin leading at the moment and just opening the margin slightly from Winterbottom. They're now beginning to get an understanding of car trend. Here it is again. Oh, I'd say for sure that's a jump. I, <laughs> I, I, seriously, the other cars aren't moving. Now you can't see from there. So one of the things that's really important to understand, Jamie Wickup's at the back of the grid. There's a lot more elevation change on the start pretty straight than you think. He couldn't see the starter's rostrum, I'm sure, because he's also parked behind other cars. So what they would normally do is the team would call you for the start, and they would say green light or red light out. And I think, under that scenario, he has actually jumped that. In the meantime, using our facilities, we've gone back and had a look at whether or not the trigger to start and the jump align, and apparently they do. So Jamie's okay, so you're right. When you can't see the lights, you take the radio cue, and he would have been told to go. Fastest lap of the race now, Shane Van Gisbergen. Two minute, 9.39, as they all find their feet. They'll be making little tweak adjustments to the brake percentage front to rear, little changes to the front and rear anti-roll bars to just find out where the settled positions are in the cars at the moment. And then sometimes you've just got to put up with what you've got until you can trim it later. And that was the great comment that Richard Holway made to young Scott McLaughlin. As he come up pit straight, he was leading. And for the second lap, Richard said to him, mate, if it's a bit twitchy, just bring that front bar up. So when you're driving, what Neil said before is you've got to assess the balance. Remember, they've got full load of fuel. It's the first run of the race. They haven't run at this time of day 
the feeling and the grip level will be something the driver has to try to uh, understand and give the team feedback on to tune the car through the day. But one of the first things that you do is you tune the sway bars, the anti-roll bars on board. And when you do that, if the car is a little bit oversteering, meaning the rear of the car is unbalanced and sliding around, instead of coming off on the rear bar, you come up.